Hello everyone, Boulevard here, Tournament Tactician there, Patch 3.4, Tournament Tier List. Let's get into it. So, there were no big open tournaments on the opening weekend of the patch, which means that a lot of the meta adaptations that we normally get in tournaments didn't happen. Things are looking very similar to this week to they did on the opening weekend. We just had Runeterra Academy last night. Things are very open, but the top end of the meta is looking about the same as it did a week ago. Now, that is to say that this tier list is pretty volatile. It shouldn't be followed very closely. It shouldn't be taken to heart too much, mostly because there are just so many one of decks that are popping up and I cannot list all of them because they, you know, they come into the tournament and they top and then they immediately fall out and they don't do anything after that. But I, even looking at like EMEA Fight Night from tonight, I think out of the eight competitors, there's 18 different decks. It's a lot, you know, there's a lot going on right now and it's just too much to kind of tier consistently. There's a lot of experimentation still coming out of players. Trying to tell you a standard lineup is impossible. There's no such thing. No one is, there's no like set three deck lineup. There's nothing even really close to it. We don't even have like an archetypal thing of, oh yeah, well, it's going to be like three Voltron decks or like two mid range decks and a control deck. None of that. We have really no indicator as to what a quote unquote standard lineup is going to look like because a lot of people are just also against the idea of running Fizz Lulu, the best deck in the game, according to the stats. And I think a lot of players, no one's really going to argue on that one. The Piltover runs on Yordles and Arms. But overall, let's let's just talk about the tier list deck by deck. So I didn't want to put Fizzlulu alone in tier one because that was making a lot more of a statement about the deck than I really wanted to. What I think the main advantage of Fizzlulu is when you look at all these other decks is that Fizzlulu, out of pretty much every deck on this tier list, except maybe Spiders, cares the absolute least about drawing its champions. You can win a game with Yordles in Arms without Fizz or Lulu, absolutely no problem, as long as you also draw Yordles in Arms. And if you don't draw any of those three cards, well, that's nine cards out of your deck that is literally a quarter of your deck that you didn't draw and yeah maybe the fizz comes too late maybe the lulu comes too late but your little captain can also do a fair amount of heavy lifting if you don't get any of those other cards and i think that's a lot of the strength of fizz lulu right now is the consistency that it has that a lot of these other decks don't because like aphelios victor is a pretty good deck but if you don't draw aphelios or victor it's not a great deck you know what i mean and especially these voltron decks as we get a lot of voltron decks that are getting honed in on you know if they don't draw their champions they can cheese out a win but generally it's like i'll you know i'll voltron decks will beat you if neither of you draw champions but if both of you draw champions it kind of depends on what deck you're playing your and arms will beat you regardless of whether or not they draw champions which i think is one of the reasons that it is so strong Sivir Demacia, still just a consistent option. I think people should probably be putting in more quicksands than they are, especially as Voltron decks continue to do well in the meta. I'm talking Victor Riven, I'm talking Pantheon Yumi, I'm talking Ophelios Victor, and by extension, the Vi Victor atrocity variant that we're seeing the Piltover and Zon Allegiance, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I, I do think that Sivir Auction is still in a very good spot. Not sure that like I would want to call it tier one, but it's sort of in there so that I don't have to say that Fizzlulu is alone at the top. Tier 2, Victor Riven didn't really fall off after week 1, which is kind of expected. Again, there weren't really any tournaments for it to fall off in, and then it had, you know, it's continued to have good ladder performance, it's continued to do well at the Runeterra Academy, and all these fight nights and whatnot. So, yeah, it's fine, it's Tier 2. Pantheon Yumi, again, these are things that you're used to. Aphelios Victor, this one is actually really hard to track stats on, specifically because so many people are still figuring out the champion personalization that they want to go for. Uh, I have a deck tech coming out with Giant Slayer on this deck specifically, where I really break down, like, this is a very personable deck. You know, even Aphelios Victor don't have to be in the deck. You can run any combination of Zoe, Vi, Aphelios Victor, or... I think those are the only four that I've seen on mass. No one's really running outside of that, but you could still run this as the old school Ruben pile and, you know, find the success that you can because Bandle City has kind of been taken out of the equation, which is one of the regions that really made it hard for players to play this value oriented Targon strategy that I think Aphelios Victor really leans into. But I do like the Voltron style that Victor still gives you when you play him. Of course, Vi is another one that you can kind of pillar on. She doesn't get as many keywords, but she does get just as big, if not bigger. You still throw an Infernum on her, hits just as hard, all that good stuff. But Aphelios Victor. Still a solid deck. I think there's too much variation within the builds, and players are just playing suboptimal builds in tournaments because, like, it's what they feel comfortable on, and then those tech choices are catching up for them, or the tech choices that they didn't bring in are catching up for them. I think Sunburst is something that more players should be putting into these lists when they're going into a tournament setting. At the very least, to make your opponent, you know, put them on guard of the fact that there is a threat for their big unit that they want to just buff all their resources into. Say, hey, you can't do that. You do have to think about the Sunburst that I have. You cannot protect against this. Azir Zareth, I think... A lot of people thought they had Sundisk figured out, and it's got this very set place in the meta. I'm here to keep out the slower decks. 
the Mono Shirima players are aware of that. They've started to adapt their builds a little bit more against these Voltron-style strategies that were supposed to be beating them out because there's no single target removal in these lists, or at least not one for large units. You know, the most that they're going to be able to deal is four damage to something, maybe five if they have the Xerath on board, and that's the singular unit. But for the most part, they're, they are adapting the builds, and the Sun Disk is continuing to perform at an admirable rate in tournament. Its ladder presence has fallen off a cliff, uh, it's down to, by which I mean it's down to 10% from like 30 on the opening weekend, but still a very solid option, and I still think a very large focal point of the meta where players are afraid to run these triple control lineups and things like that on fear that you will just run into like Sun Disk and then, you know, another like Voltron deck that you wanted to ban because it can just slip through the cracks and beat you even if you're moderately prepared for it. Feel the Rush is probably the control deck that is doing the best. Darkness is... It was played a lot at the RA League, and it did pretty poorly. But Feel the Rush, having that overwhelm to get over, you know, sort of these wide boards, still being able to play the Vengeance and the Flash Freeze so that you have multiple routes to cover, things like Victor Riven and all these different strategies that are just trying to one-shot you. You you know, you're not just on the three Vengeance or just the three Flash Freeze. You have a variety of ways to deal with these. You really get to streamline your builds for the things that you expect to see. And then you still have enough finishing power that you can kind of beat out Sun Disk and things like that. And then Sentinel Control has been performing very admirably as a proactive control deck, where you see things like Sun Disk and you can beat it because you can just throw down all these fearsome units and pick off the low HP units that Sun Disk is sort of trying to wall up on and just have a relatively good time. I've talked about Sentinel Control at length in the past. It is a very meta-dependent deck, and it seems, at least from the opening week, that we are in a meta that is good for Sentinel Control. Now, most people are going Jace Elise Vi in that order 3, 2, 1. You, of course, can put Kindred in here or any of these other cards that you want. But overall, I, I think Sentinel Control is like the dark horse coming into the weekend. Like, some people know about it. Not everybody does. It, it's not like an unknown factor, but like, you have to be in the know. So this is me putting you in the know so that you can go ahead and put this in your lineup. Again, I wouldn't read too much into like thinking, oh, well, I have, you know, Boulevard said Yordles and Arms and Silver Demacia are tier one. So I have to pick those two and pair them with a tier two deck. It's definitely not like that. We are in it's such a wide open meta that the fact that I'm even putting out a tier list is more so just based off of the fact that I do this. Uh, you know, it's not like, oh man, you know, I've seen the writing on the wall. I have all the answers. Let me spread them around to everybody. I'm doing this because I always do this. And then tier three, we just have some of the major players that are rounding things out, things that I expect to be relatively popular. Um, Zigzalia, Scouts, uh, Bandle City Swain. It's not seen a lot of it, but I believe that it has potential to make a comeback pretty much anytime sentinel control is in the meta i think bandle city swain is admirable you know they're they're relative calling them similar is disingenuous but uh they're both proactive control e decks it's just a matter of like is flock or vengeance better and right now vengeance does seem to be better that's probably the best way to put it Tribeam Control, despite getting some buffs, had some rough times in week one, but I think players are starting to sort of figure it out a little bit more. It's still not doing great against Sun Disk or even the Demacia base decks, not as good as you would want it to anyway, and you're still getting sort of outsworn by Yordles and Arms. It's in an okay spot. It's not a great spot, but it's on the tier list, and that's kind of what matters. And then Darkness and Bandle Tree, they're hanging in there. Lee Sin, everyone's still kind of figuring out what it looks like. If we look at Fight Night, there's been Lee Sin Victor, there's been Lee Sin Fizz, Lee Sin Ophelios popped up a little bit. No one's really sure what Lee Sin looks like right now, and we're trying to branch out of Targon yet again. Historically, we've never succeeded in leaving Targon with Lee Sin. Akshan Lee has been a factor that has performed in like one or two seasonals is like one person went into the top 32 but mainstream leaving Lee Sin out of Targon has not been seen since the deck's inception really uh not since Targon released anyway because the original Lee Sin decks were Noxus because Targon didn't exist but ever since we figured out Zoe Lee no one has succeeded in making a an exodus from Targon become the standard and I'm not sure that we're on that path right now uh but Victor is looking very good across the board I mean but I I do not think that Lee Sin Victor is your best Victor deck and I don't think that you're really fighting for these other regional combinations uh where you feel like you need to go Ionia PNZ you know we'll see and then Spiders you know Agro is still doing very well uh, I, I almost just want to put aggro here. Like, when I say spiders, I usually mean, like, spiders and pirates and whatever the third aggro deck that people tend to bring is. I think right now Draven Rumble is the go-to third deck for a lot of people. We've kind of fallen off of the Ziggs Gnar list because of the nerfs to Gnar and a couple of other things. But uh, if you're looking to go triple aggro, I think it is spiders, pirates, and Draven Rumble right now. I think that's what a lot of people are going for. Or you can even go Victor Riven, you know, get that PNZ Noxus in there if you don't want to do Draven Rumble. I think Draven... No, yeah, Draven Rumble's PNZ, not Bandle City. Anyway... That's that. Don't want to talk too much because I am doing this in one take. But that is going to do it for me this week. Again, GG Torex Mastering Runeterra Online League Series. Sign-ups for both of those tournaments will be in the description below. Please do not take this to heart too much. 
you really need to be adaptable and malleable this weekend. Just kind of take what you think are the best three decks, run them in there. Do not try to think in the least about trying to counterpick somebody or be like, oh yeah, Yordles and Arms is popular. I can counterpick that. It's not popular enough. Um, you will see people running double Yordles and Arms, but it's it's not popular enough for you to come in with a counter strategy for that specifically in a large open event, of which we are going to have a couple this weekend. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Boulevard, and as always, good luck in your tournaments.